Well, hello again. Um, let's try to summarize here the muscles of your forearm. We have an important landmark here that is our brachioradialis. It's originated from the lateral supracondylar ridge, inserting itself all the way down uh, near the styloid process of the radius. It's supplied by the radial nerve. That's the only exception to the rule. You will later realize that the radial nerve is supplying the extensor muscles. Although this muscle is causing flexion of your forearm, it's still supplied by the radial nerve. If we move medially, we will have four muscles that are fanning from um, uh, the medial uh, epicondyle. Let's put these things back. So we have four muscles fanning here from the medial epicondyle of your humerus. Uh, we can organize them by PFPF, pronator teres, flexor carpi radialis, flexor carpi radialis, um, flex, uh, palmaris longus, and flexor carpi ulnaris. Those three muscles will be supplied by um, median nerve, whereas this ulnaris muscle would be by the ulnar nerve. Ulnar nerve. If I'm to remove those, uh, this group of muscles to reveal the muscles underneath, we will see here that we have an important muscle called flexor digitorum superficialis. It's taking an origin from the medial epicondyle. It's taking also an origin from the coronoid process and takes origin from the shaft of the radius. Uh, it flexes your fingers from two to five and uh, it is innervated by the median nerve. If I'm taking this out, we will see two muscles here that are deeper, and because one of them is deeper, still is flexor digitorum, we will call that flexor digitorum profundus. The other one will be associated only with moving your big finger with your uh, thumb, and that will be your um, flexor pollicis longus flexor pollicis longus. Flexor pollicis longus will receive nerve supply from the median nerve, whereas um, your flexor uh, digitorum profundus will receive nerve supply from the median nerve, as well as this nerve here, which is your ulnar nerve, ulnar nerve, all right? These were the muscles of the flexor compartment of your forearm. We will move from that into the extensor compartment. We will still use our um, brachioradialis as a good landmark here. Um, let's see if this will hold. Yes, it did. Um, this is your brachioradialis one more time. And then we have two extensors here. Both of them are extensor carpi radialis, but one of them is longer than the other. So this will be your extensor carpi radialis longus. This would be your extensor carpi radialis brevis. Medial to that, you will have your uh, extensor digitorum, extensor digitorum. Go more medial, you will have extensor digiti minimi, extensor digiti minimi. It gives only a tendon to the little pinky finger. That's your extensor digiti minimi. And finally, you will have here extensor carpi ulnaris, extensor carpi ulnaris. There are some um, muscles that are hiding from you because we cannot peel everything here. Um, we already described uh, extensor digitorum, but we have also extensor indesis, and you can only see the tendon here of the extensor indesis that extends your index finger. Then we have extensor Pollicis longus that is hiding also underneath, but this is the tendon of the extensor pollicis longus. Then we have the extensor pollicis brevis muscle right here, and we have our abductor pollicis longus muscle over here. All these muscles here, all the extensor muscles, as well as your brachioradialis, as we learned earlier, all of these muscles will be supplied by the same nerve called radial nerve radial nerve. If I'm to remove this compartment here, I will see a deep muscle called supinator muscle, and that is associated with supination of your forearm. It's supplied by deep interosseous nerve. Okay? So those were the muscles of the forearm. 
and we did cover before the muscles of the arm both the flexors and extensors so I will see you in the next video uh, for the muscles of the hand see you then